Hello, friends, and welcome into Bengals Breakdown by Chat Sports. Mini camp winners and losers, as promised, coming up next here. If you guys want wall to wall coverage of the Bengals all season and off season, I guess we'll say all year, probably makes the most sense, right? All year long, this is your one stop shop. Hit that sub button. It's free and it always will be right here on Bengals Breakdown. Let's dive into some mini camp winners. First up, Andre Yoshivas. Yoshi, as I'll call him, as I, I love that nickname for him. A lot of constant drum beats. The phrase of every day there's an open OTA, open minicamp, hear good things about somebody. That that's consistency bodes well for them long term. And we've heard good things about Yoshi. All OTAs and minicamp maybe a little bit less raw than initially feared. Drew some praise for his wide receiver work and for special teams work. If you can be a gunner on day one, that's a big deal for your wide receiver four or five role. That's how you make a team and give yourself some time to grow as an actual receiver by helping out on special teams. Now, if you have a Bengals minicamp winner in mind, drop the player name for me in the comments section. I've got seven more winners to get to, but I want to hear from you guys in the comments as well. Similar thread as Andre Yoshivas, Charlie Jones, the rookie out of Purdue, that's rookie from Princeton, and Andre, and now the fourth round pick from the Boilermakers. He drew praise from Joe Burrow. He's getting some work as a punt returner. I think there's a very good chance that Charlie Jones next year takes over as your slot receiver if Tyler Boyd does leave, which I think is the likely path, unfortunately. And this year is your main punt returner, kind of takes over the Trent Taylor role. Here's what Joe Burrow said about Charlie Jones. Charlie's a really talented player. Still learning the system, just like with all the, the rookies, but he has all the potential in the world, and I'm excited to see him grow. He's going to be a great player for us. Now, at some level, the quarterback's always going to be super nice to the new receivers, but at the same time, also a good sign that the quarterback is heaping praise upon his potential future slot receiver. Of these two rookies, who are you more excited about looking forward? CJ for Charlie Jones, AI for Andre Yoshivas. This is going to be today's pinned comments, by the way. So if that ad break plays here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, ignore the ad, head to the pinned comment and vote. CJ, AI right now in the comments. I almost said IA like three different times, but by the way, I don't know, I don't know why. Alan George is next up here, the... Under the radar sleeper corner for this Bengals team. Shinobe Awuzie, more on him in a little bit, is still out recovering from his injury. Alan George was the first man up at corner, though. And I think this Bengals team thinks they found something. I think they like Alan George in a way that maybe we did not anticipate with, you know, the former UDFA, who's not played much in his NFL career. Targeted four times in coverage in four games played. Three catches allowed, 30 yards. Too small of a sample size to get a real feel for anything. But Alan George is your first corner off the bench right now. It's a big deal for him and for the Bengals. Speaking of corners, how about Sidney Jones? And this is based on what he did at minicamp. Had a couple PBUs and had the interception off of Joe Burrow when uh, a little bit behind T. Higgins, but off Higgins' hands and into the waiting arms of Sidney Jones. Jones has not played that much in recent years. Uh, this was a probably going to be a first-round pick when he had initially declared out of Washington. Everyone liked him. There was a lot of buzz on him. And then, unfortunately for Sidney Jones, I believe that was pro day. Yeah, his pro day. Blew, blew up his Achilles. So he falls to the, to the s second round. The Eagles take him, and he's bounced around since then. Jacksonville, Seattle, the Raiders most recently didn't play very much. Bengals picked him up in March, and now he's fighting for a backup corner role alongside guys like DJ Ivy, who I continue to hear some solid. I know Dan Horde, for example, is a big fan of DJ, DJ Ivy because of the length. DJ Turner also there. So there's there's bodies at corner, and I, I feel better about it with Alan Jones and Sidney Jones making some plays than I did, you know, maybe going into OTAs and minicamp. Got some deals for you guys. Bengals hats are on sale. Chatsports.com slash Bengals hat. The draft style hats from Fanatics. Plus the t-shirt combo pack is available. T-shirt and a hat combo. The best deal Fanatics ever offers. If you want to be the uh, Joe Burrow style headband, 
They've got you covered as well. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Chatsports.com slash Bengals hats. Appreciate you guys who support us here. Go check them out on Fanatics. Next winner, Travion Williams. Joe Mixon got the reps with the ones. Duh. Williams got the reps with the twos. This comes on the heels of Zach Taylor being fairly high on Travion Williams and some of his uh, draft-ish media availability, like around the NFL draft time. Williams not played that much uh, in his NFL career. 47 carries, that's it. But they continue to say, the Bengals do, that that Samaj P. Ryan role, the third down, the, the pass protector, the backup back, I think that's going to be Travion Williams' role. Now, maybe Chase Brown emerges. Cool. Maybe Chris Evans contributes still plenty as a uh, pass catcher, but I think that that RB2 role behind Joe Mixon, I think Williams is the favorite uh, to do that, to handle that role, excuse me. Next up, Chidame Ouzie. Uh Yeah, it turns out we have a lot of corners on this list. Uh, his recovery, though, appears to be going really well from the torn ACL. Not only was he looking explosive and sharp in the drills he was doing, doing like the... Uh, the uh, Ladder drills, I believe it was called. No brace on his knee either. So really good news there on Awuzie. I think he's going to be good to go, if not for week one, by training camp potentially as well. Joe Burrow, a winner. Yeah, of course he is, right? Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, he was 9 of 10 in 7-on-7 seven seven drills on Wednesday, which is like the most team stuff the Bengals did. did. More and more now, OTAs and minicamp are super light uh, for players. The one was a drop that turned into an interception. So... Pretty much perfect uh, from that standpoint. Also had a very nice uh, end zone fade throw to, to Irv Smith on Thursday's more light practice. Where would you guys rank Joe Burrow among all the different NFL quarterbacks? Sound off for me in the comment section. Is he one? Jamar Chase thinks so. Burrow thinks he's more number two behind Mahomes. Where do you rank him? Let me know in the comments. One last winner, Irv Smith. Again, it's been a kind of steady drumbeat of, hey, this guy's making some plays for you. And they're banking on him. The Bengals are. There's He's flashing in, in, in a good way for a role that is wide open because Hayden Hurst is gone and it's Drew Sample right now. If Irv Smith can stay healthy, he should have a significant breakout campaign because he's got a great quarterback around him. He doesn't have to be the guy on offense. He can be a secondary, tertiary option behind Chase and Higgins and even Mixon and you know, Tyler Boyd, he can be the fourth or fifth option, and he'll be able to make some big-time splash plays. And I think that bodes very well for the Bengals moving forward. So I'm excited about Irv Smith this year. Might only be here for one year because, in theory, much like Hayden Hurst, we'll get paid somewhere else next year. All right, some losers. DJ Reader. Unfortunately, he is battling a minor toe issue. Now, has been described as minor, so I'm not panicking about it from this one. Uh, he's got gout in one of his toes, which sounds incredibly painful. I think that's just like a version of arthritis. So in theory, he'll be good to go for camp, but that's not ideal. Even if it's a veteran, he's probably fine. I did want to make note of it. There's not many, very many losers in minicamp, so I'll make note of a guy that's injured and banged up right now. Now, if you guys have other losers in mind, be mean. You can be a hater in the comment section. It's fine. Drop that player or player names you think were a minicamp loser so far. Next up is quarterback Jake Browning. There is a battle. Not many of them on offense this year for roster battles, but backup quarterback is one of them. Jake Browning, the former Washington Husky quarterback, is battling Trevor Simeon and sounds like in a very small amount of reps those guys are getting, Simeon looks much more consistent as a thrower. And Browning is not at the stage, which doesn't shock me. Uh, Browning flashed early in his career with the Huskies, and it kind of faded away. In the end, I think who the backup QB is doesn't matter that much for Cincinnati because um, it's all about Joe Burrow. Bur Burrow's healthy, Super Bowl contender. If he's not, ugh, not exactly a great thing anymore. Last loser is some of the depth-wide receivers. In particular, guys like Trent Irwin, guys like Trent Taylor. Uh, got the People are going to be, be replaced by Andre Yoshivas and Charlie Jones. Stanley Morgan fits in that loser category as well. Because there's been so much good buzz, positive buzz on Yoshi and Charlie Jones, 
I don't think that bodes well for guys like a Stanley Morgan, a Trenton Irwin, a Trent Taylor. So those guys face a very tricky path to making the Bengals 53-man roster. Thank you.